All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at our, um, let's see, this is our 1, 4 to 1.5 quiz review, or test review, I should say. Okay, now when we're just doing simplifying with radicals, all right, you just got to see what goes into it. I have no idea what goes into 567, I'm thinking maybe threes. I do that on my calculator. Okay, so I get three and is that better? Three and one eighty nine, and then divide by three again, and I get sixty three. And I know that's nine and nine and seven, and I know that's three and three. Remember, this one is just regular square root, so you get a pair, dies, pair, it dies, okay? Don't go too fast. I know you guys know how to do this, so the only mistake you're going to make is if you, go, if you go too fast. So I'm taking out a 3 and a 3. 3 times 3 is 9 root 7, okay? Make sure to show your work on all these. All right, now I'm in a 3 jail, right? 56 is 7 and 8. 8 is 2 and 4, 4 is 2 and 2. So I'm now looking for groups of 3. And with 3 come out, 2 of them die. Okay, so I have a 2 on the outside, a 7 on the inside. Make sure on your test that if it's a root 3, it's a root 3. All right. And then as far as x's go, I have 3 of them. So 2 of them die, and 1x comes out. There we go. All right, nice. Okay, now we're in a fourth root jail. Um, I'm just gonna start dividing this by two a bunch of times. Two ninety six, two and forty eight. That's two and twenty four. That's two and twelve. That's two and six. That's two and three. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but remember. I need four. And when I get my group of four, three of them die, and I have like nothing else left here, okay? So a two will come out, but look at what I have left still, a two, a two, and a three. So I've got to multiply those together, and I get 12 on the inside. Okay, and then I think about if I have nine M's, like I don't know if you guys want to write them all out, I mean, you certainly can if you want. And I have a group of four and three of them die, and a group of four and three of them die. Okay, so I have m squared on the outside, m on the inside. And then if I have a bunch of n's, 12, can you guys picture that it would have three n's escaping and none left over? Again, with a little bit more room there. All right. Okay, we're back to square roots here. Um, I don't know, it ends in a zero, so I know it's 10 and 24. And then 24 is 2, 12, 2, 6, 2, 3. And you guys were back to square roots, so we're looking for groups of 2. All right, that one dies, that one dies. So a 4 comes out. That three stays in, and then I have a total of four J's. And again, I'm looking for groups of two. That one dies, two, that one dies. Okay, so I get J squared. Okay, so four J squared, square root three squared. All right, perfect. Um, okay. Back to a third root. Now, you guys, I know a lot of people were asking me this. So they're like, oh, well, this means I, right? Only if it's a square root inside of a square, okay? If it's a square, if it's a negative inside of a square, I mean. If it's a negative inside of a cube, it just means the answer is negative. So negatives can come out of cubes, okay? So we're going to make that negative. 
24 is 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. I got a pair of 2s, so I get a 2 on the outside, a 6 on the inside. That's 2 times 3. And then, let's see. Oh, wait. I messed up. Good thing I caught myself. This is a cube root, so I'm actually looking for groups of 3. Okay. The negative still comes out. The 2 comes out. There's a 3 left over in the cube root. All right. Now, if I have 8 A's and I need 3 of them to escape and those 2 die, and I need 3 to escape and those 2 die, basically I have 2 that escaped and 2 that got left out. And then if I have four B's. Two of them die, so one B escapes, one B is left over. Okay, make sure your square root that covers the whole thing right there. Okay, perfect. Um, let's look at this last one here. Okay, there's another square root. Um, 11 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3. All right, so I have a pair of 3s. One comes out there. That gives me a negative 15 on the outside with an 11 left over. And then if I have 7 peds, okay, uh, let's see, I'm doing pairs. So pair of 2, 1 dies. Pair of 2, 1 dies. Pair two one dies. Alright, so I have P to the third and P. Okay, so not too bad on that first section. The biggest thing is to remember if it's a square root, a cube root, or a fourth root that you're doing, and then also a negative with the third can just come out. Okay. Okay, guys, every page before I move on, I go and check and make sure I didn't mess anything up and sadly i mess some stuff up all right uh on number four there's a little five hiding right there with the three so it's actually not three that's 15 be careful about that all right i usually check that a little closer and then on number five i just messed up because there was already a p on the outside and i added three more so there actually should be a total of P to the fourth, okay? So that's my bad. I would have lost two points on that page. Whoops. All right, that's okay, though. I'm going to get 100% on this. Here we go. Okay, guys. Um, so first of all, you want to simplify this, you know, each part first before we do the problem. So 54 is 6 times 9, 2 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I have a pair of threes, and the three comes out with the two, so there's a six on the outside, and then a two and a three are left over, so there's a six on the inside. And then 24 is four times six, two times two, two times three. There's a pair of twos. Okay, so this one has a two on the outside, and then a two and a three, a six on the inside, right? Well, now these are like terms, okay? Because root 6 and root 6 are like terms, so we can just subtract them. 6 minus 2 is 4 root 6, okay? All right. Dang, these are very big numbers. Okay, I know 3 goes into that 121 times. That's 11 times 11. So I have a pair of 11, so the 11 comes out with the 5 and gives me 55 root 3. Okay, on this one, I know that's 2 times 49, which is 7 times 7. So I have a pair of 7s. That goes out with that 7. Eight, 7 times 7 is 49, and that one's root 2. Okay, and then 192, I know 2 goes into it. I'm not entirely sure how many times. 92 divided by 2. Uh, 96 times. And 2 goes into that 48 times. Oh boy. Okay, and 2 goes into that 24 times. 2 goes into that 12 times. 
Two goes into that six times, two goes into that three times. That's fun. All right, so I have one pair that dies, pair that dies, pair that dies. Okay, now, you guys, a two, two, two is coming out with eight. So I just have to multiply eight times two times two times two. And that gives me 64 on the outside. And then the only thing that's left over is a three. Okay, now that I have that, you want to look at this and say, which ones are like terms? Well, the root threes are like terms, so I can add those together. I just do 55 plus 64, which is 119. And then the other one, I just leave because I can't combine a root two with a root three. Okay, so 119 root three minus 49 root two. All right, let's look at number three. First, I'm going to distribute this, and I'll get square root 20 minus square root 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, for 20, I'll go 4 times 5, 2 times 2, and I get 2 square root 5. For 100, that's a perfect square. And when you guys see perfect squares, like, I just do it. I mean, you could go, you know... 10 times 10 and get a pair of 10s, but I already know 100 is a perfect square. So when I see that, I can just say that's 10. These are not like terms, so that's going to be my answer right there. Okay, and then as soon as you guys see something with two terms times something with two terms, guess what we're going to do? The box. Every time you see something with two terms, times something with two terms, okay? All right, square root two plus three, and then one minus four square root two. All right, let's see. One times square root two is square root two, okay? One times three is three. Now this is the tricky one, okay? So it's negative four, and then you guys, square root 2 times square root 2 is the square root of 4, which is just 2. Or when you multiply square root times itself, you get 2. So in this box, it's actually going to be negative 8. Okay? And then when I multiply the last box, 4 times 3, that's negative 12 root 2. Now, do you guys remember, we've been doing this where you go across one diagonal, and in this case, that is like terms, negative eight plus three is negative five. And then you go across the other diagonal, this is also like terms. Now the only thing you wanna remember is there's a one right there. So one root two minus 12 root two is minus 11 root two. Okay, and that's it. All right, now the two types of uh, problems that we have to do these square rooty guys. When we have square roots on the bottom, we don't like that, okay? So you have to do the conjugate. Now, if it's just a single like square root by itself, we actually are gonna do what this is called um, rationalizing. We're just gonna put a square root three on the top and bottom. If you accidentally, um, like if you did a negative square root three, you're still gonna get the same answer, it's fine. But you only needed to do square root three, okay? All right, sorry, there was a announcement going off okay now you guys when i distribute through here all right i get 12 square root 3 and then when i distribute to here square root 3 times square root 6 is square root 18. on the bottom a square root 3 times a square root 3 is square root of 9 but that's just 3 okay now, when you look at that, you want to think, well, which of these can I break down? I can't break down that. I can break down 18, though. 18 is 2, 9, 3, 3, pair of 3s. So this is 12 square root 3 plus 3 square root 2. Now, in order to simplify this, you guys, it has to be all three places. And if you're simplifying numbers without square roots, you need to simplify with numbers without square roots, okay? So I can simplify the 12, the 3, and the 3. 3 goes into that one time, one time, and four times. So this is 4 square root 3 
plus 1 square root 2 all over 1. Okay? Now this one's a little more difficult. We can't just multiply by a square root. we got to use the conjugate. Hopefully you guys remember that. The conjugate is you take this and you do the opposite. So it would be 5 minus 3 root 2. And I do the same thing on the top. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a box for the top and we're going to do a box for the bottom. And I know there's like not a ton of room on here, so you might want to go do your boxes on the back or something like that. Okay, so on the top I have square root 2 minus 3 over 5 minus 3 square root 2. And on the bottom I have 5 plus 3 square root 2 and 5 minus 3 square root 2. Okay. Let's do this box first. This box gives me 5 root 2 minus 15. Now this is the tricky one, so be careful. It's negative 3, and square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. So that one gives me negative 6. Negative 6. And then this one gives me negative times negative is a positive 9 root 2. Okay? Let's see, that was for the top. So the top is going to be negative 21. And 5 plus 9 is going to be plus 14 root 2. Okay? All right, let's check out the bottom side now. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3 root 2 is 15 root 2. 5 times negative 3 root 2 is minus 15 root 2. And this one is the tricky one. Okay. First, a negative times a negative, a negative times a positive is a negative, right? 3 times 3 is 9. And square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. So that gives me negative 18, okay? Um, when I go across that way, 25 minus 18 is 7, I believe. Yeah, and then when I go across this way, they cancel out, right? Minus 15 root 2 plus 15 root 2. So this is my answer. Now, I just look at this. You always look at these answers at the end and say, can I reduce those three numbers? And you can. 7 goes into all of those. Um, 7 goes into that once, that twice, that three times. So the answer is negative 3 plus 2 root 2 over 1. Okay? Ooh, that was a lot. All right, and now I'm going to go make sure I didn't make any mistakes on that page, and then we will move on. All right, all right. Killed it on that page. Okay. Here we go. All right. Simplest radical form. If it says 4 to the 2 over 3, remember, this goes in, this goes out. So it's a cube root of 4 squared. Now that's just writing it in radical form. For simplest radical form, I'd probably change that to 16, and then I would break this down. Because 16, we know that's 2 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2. And we're doing groups of 3 right here. So this actually could equal a 2 on the outside, a 2 on the inside. So you're writing it in, in radical form, and then you're like, you know, fixing it. Okay, notice these are all half right there. That means these are all going to be in one big square root. Going to be 25 to the first, x to the 7, y to the 5. Okay, uh, 25, we don't even really need to break down because it's like 5 times 5, but it's a perfect square also. You can't break it down though, so I would get 5. And then if I had 7x's and I was doing my pairs, right, I would make 3 pairs with 1 left over. And if I had 5y's and I was doing pairs, I would have 2 pairs with 1 left over. Okay, I think that's how I do that one. Okay, writing these in simplest expo exponential form. You can take that whole thing to the 1 fourth. Like, that would be totally fine if you did that. Or you could do 2 to the 1 fourth 
and q to the seventh force. So, like, either way, I would be happy with that. All right? Those ones aren't too difficult. And so same thing here. This is 7k to the third, but this square root is to the one-half power. So I put to the three halves. And again, you can write it together or separate. All right? Yeah, that should be good. Okay. All right, these last ones real quick. Remember, if you're raising to a power, you just need to multiply. So this would be like u to the... Now, I need to see what 5 fourths times 8 thirds is as a fraction. It's to the 10 thirds. Okay, I just did 5 fourths times 8 thirds, which means it's u to the 10 in a cube root. Now, if you don't need to write them all out, don't write them all out. But anyway, there's 10 u's. Cube root means I need a group of 3 and 2 die. I need a group of 3 and 2 die. Oh, and I can make one more group of 3 and 2 die. So, 3 of them escape and 1 is left over. u to the 3rd cube root u. Okay? And then this last one here, when I'm dividing, I subtract. So 2 minus negative 3 fourths as a fraction is 11 fourths. So this gives me, whoops, a to the 11 fourths. But in radical form, it's the fourth root of a to the 11. And then if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I have two a's can escape. Three are left over. Okay? That page went pretty quick. Let me go see if I got all those right. All right, excellent. Now we're going to look at some I problems. Okay, you guys, this one's pretty easy. So first of all, that negative inside of a square root, right? It just means I. And then when you do this fraction, well, these are both perfect squares. We just do the square root of each. 144 is 12, 25 is 5. And the I either just goes out in front or you can put the I on top. Just don't put it on the bottom. All right. This next one's also going to be an I. And I just need to reduce it. Okay, I know 5 goes in because it ends in 5. 49 times, which is then 7 times 7. So I've got a pair of 7s. Okay, so I get a 7. A 5 stays in, and the I comes out also. Okay. Did too much there. Ah, let me just redraw that. Sorry. Hold on. I didn't like the way I wrote that. 7 with an I and then a square root of 5. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Now, I to the 15. You guys want to remember this um, on your test. So, I is I. I squared is negative 1. So, those are two that we already know now. I to the third is I squared times I, so it's negative I. And then I to the fourth is I squared squared, which is positive 1. And then it just keeps running through there. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, I 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I 13, I 14, I 15. So that's I 15 right there. Okay? So I to the 15th equals negative I. Remember we talked about you get the closest multiple of 4. So if it's like too big to count, you go to the closest multiple of 4. 16 is a multiple of 4. 1 less than that is 15. All right? Okay. Uh, boy, I to the 78. All right, let me go back to my little chart over here. 78, huh? Okay. So, and you can, like, use a calculator here, too, but... I think the closest multiple 4 to 78 is 76. 
Yeah, 76 divides by 4. So this would be I-76. When I go forward, that would be I-77. That would be I-78. So it looks like I to the 78th is negative 1. So that means that this is negative 7 times negative 1, which just equals 7. Okay? Um, okay, let's multiply those. That's negative 24, and then let's multiply those. That's I to the 29th. Okay, let's figure out where I to the 29th is. All right. Uh, the closest multiple forward to that is probably 28. I to the 28th, so that would be I to the 29th. So I to the 29th is just I. I to the 29th is just I. And then if I do this one, oh boy, okay, a negative squared is a positive. I to the 5th squared is I to the 10th. And then 4 to the 4th, I, I think it's 256, yeah, is 256, and then that's I to the 12th. So when I multiply those, that's 256 I to the 22. Okay, let's figure out what I to the 22 is. So come over here. The closest multiple to 22 is probably 20, and then I count forward 21, 22. So I to the 22 is negative 1. So that just equals negative 256. All right, cool. That one was not too bad either. I've been on a roll. I haven't made too many. I haven't made any mistakes since the first page, actually. All right, guys, we're almost done. This part is actually pretty easy because, okay, when you're adding, all right, all we got to do is let's add the real numbers. Five plus negative four is one, and then let's add the imaginary numbers. Six plus seven is thirteen i. That's it. Okay. Uh, same thing here. We just have to we just have to distribute this first. So let's see. This is 21 plus 6i. This is negative 40i, and then a negative times a negative is a positive 5i squared. But before I move on, you guys know what we have to do with positive 5i squared, right? Because i squared is negative 1, this term is actually minus 5. Okay, do it one step at a time though, because I had to do the negative times negative was a positive, and then the i squared turned it back into a negative. So just be careful with that. All right, now if I'm doing real numbers, 21 minus 5 is 16. If I'm doing imaginary numbers, 6 minus 40 is negative 34i. Okay. Now, multiplying ones, we're doing the box with all of these. So I can do 7 minus 2i and 3 plus 8i. Okay, so in the box, I got 21 minus 6i plus 56i minus 16i squared. Now, i squared is negative 1, so this is actually not minus 16. i squared is actually plus 16, right? And then we go this way for the real numbers. 21 plus 16 is 37. And then we go this way for the imaginary numbers. 56 minus 6 is 50i. Okay? All right. The next one I have 3 minus 5i times 3 minus 5i. Okay, we've got to do the box for this. This will give me 9 minus 15i minus 15i. Now, when I do this, okay, a negative times a negative is a positive. 5 times 5 is 25. And i times i is i squared. Since i squared is negative 1, though, this is not plus 25i squared. It's actually minus 25. Okay, cool. So now when I go this way, 
Uh, 9 minus 25 is what? Negative 16. And when I go this way, negative 15 and negative 15 is negative 30i. Okay? Now, you guys, I know we've talked about, like, conjugates and how you have to use conjugates for that. And, I don't know, the way I taught you guys this was just to use negative 5i, which is the conjugate. There's actually kind of a faster way to do this, and that's this. You know, the only issue we have is the fact that there's an i on the bottom, right? So how do I get rid of it? Well, I just do another i. So this is actually kind of a shortcut of what I was teaching you. But you can just do a single i, because what happens is on the bottom now, this becomes 5i squared which we know is 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So that's a fast way to do it. You don't have to multiply by 5i, you can just multiply by i. And when I distribute that, I get 1i minus 10i squared. Again, we know i squared is negative 1, so this actually turns into 1i plus 10. Guys, you cannot simplify those because you, in order to simplify, you have to do it from all three spots, and we don't have anything with the i. So I would, that answer would be fine. Okay? Um, depending on if you did it a different way, you might have also got this answer. That answer is also fine. That's if you did multiply by 5i and then you like reduced it or something. But anyway, either of those answers are good. And then we'll look at this last one. Okay, so we have this conjugate right here, 8 plus 2i. So now I need to go 8 minus 2i. And here I'm going to have a box for the top and a box for the bottom. Okay? On the top I have negative 3 plus i over 8 minus 2i. On the bottom I have 8 plus 2i over 8 minus 2i. Okay, so let me fill this in. Negative 24 plus 8i. And the negative times negative is plus 6i. And then this is negative 2i squared. Okay, but we know i squared is negative 1, so this is actually plus 2. Okay, so on the top I have negative 22 and then when we go that way, plus 14i. Okay? All right, now let's look on the bottom. This is going to be 64 plus 16i minus 16i. Now, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4i squared. We know it's not that. We know it's actually plus 4. So when I go to do that, 64 plus 4 is 68. And when I go to do that, those cancel out. Um, I'm assuming that this simplifies, I think, only by 2. But if you look at all the parts, all of them divide by 2. So it would be 11, 7, and 34. And then I don't think it simplifies down anymore. that one all right you guys and that's it if you did all of this review and you understood it you should get a solid a on your test all right cool great job guys